All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session. Uh, let's just uh, begin this time with a word of prayer and we'll get to our uh, teaching session. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to come together and study your word. I pray, God, that you will minister to us. You will speak into our hearts, so God, that everything we learn, how we will use it in our lives to build your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, thank you so much for accommodating this change. Uh, I couldn't come for the first hour, but uh, uh, we'll just get into our teaching. Uh, so last class, we talked about leadership, uh, uh, quite a big chapter, but we looked at some of the very important points uh, that are required to be uh, effective leaders, right? So we'll get into chapter 14. Chapter 14 is talking about marketing, brand building, and selling. Now, when you talk about marketing, uh, the first thing that comes to our mind, uh, to your, to each one of our minds, is maybe the marketplace, right? You look at what's happening around us. Uh, so, basically, the process of marketing is understanding uh, customers' needs, creating an awareness, creating a brand, and selling that brand. Right? Now, the question comes: How do I create a brand, and how do I market the brand? Right. So, I know this. Some of us may feel okay. This feels like MBA uh, business management, but uh, we're not going to go too deep into uh, a lot of technical side of it. But we're going to look at how uh, we look at certain scriptural principles when it comes to marketing and marketing strategies. Right. So, if you if you and I want to uh, build a brand, we need to have strategies. Those are called marketing strategies, right? Uh, so if you translate this to uh, the ministry, uh, you know, you start a ministry, you you need to have a way to build your brand, right? Uh, so for example, you started your own ministry, you have your vision, your mission, uh, you need to have like, it's a brand, right? Of course, on the bigger picture, it's a ministry, but how will you build your brand? So, for example, some of the things that you look at uh, at APC, everywhere we always use our logos, and sometimes you know, in anything that we do, we we put a statement, right, to be salt and light. Or uh, so, what is that? That's brand branding your products, right? Uh, and so, let's look at a few scriptural principles and how we can apply this when it comes to marketing, brand building, and selling, right? First one, let's look at this. Marketing communications. Describe your product accurately. Proverbs 12, 19, a lie has a short life, but truth lives on forever, right? Uh, so, so describe your product accurately, meaning uh, whatever you're going to do, describe it pro accurately. Don't add to it. Don't need to remove anything from it. Don't be dishonest. Don't be disloyal. Uh, do things in the lawful manner. Uh, be truthful in your sales and your uh, marketing communications. Now, uh, so for example, if you're translating this to a church setting, if you're planning to do a worship uh, program or you're planning to do an evangelistic meeting, right, a healing service, for example, you're going out, you're giving out tracts to people. Uh, they ask you, "What is this all about?" I don't say you don't say, you know, this is uh, you come and see or you know, whatever, you know, it is It is just something that we are planning to do. No, you tell them what it is. This is a Christian program. We're going to talk about Jesus. We're calling it a healing program because we, if you believe in healing, we believe that Jesus heals people. And so when we believe in him, uh, you know, Jesus is able to heal us. And we tell them the truth. Now, the response is depends on them. Whether they like it or no, that's not our... Uh, uh, you know, that's not up to us, but what is important is that we speak the truth, right? Uh, avoid being dishonest. Build your brand, a good name and reputation. Money will follow. Proverbs 22 1. If you have to choose between good reputation and great wealth, choose good reputation. Now, this is coming from a person. Solomon is writing this. Um, he's got both, actually, right? So, He's he's got reputation. Why? He's the first one to build the temple. Uh, David gave him his father. David gave him all the 
papers, gave him all the ideas and said, Solomon, you build the temple. And of all the things, uh, when God said, Solomon, what do you want? He said, no, give me wisdom. Right. And so he had a good name. He had reputation. He had both. Uh, but here Solomon is saying, if you have to choose between wealth and a good name, choose a good name. Right. Focus on establishing a good name. And this is very, very important when it comes to ministry. A good name, a good reputation. It's very hard to find nowadays, right? But that's that a good name and reputation and organization. Uh, people will trust you. People will give into your, you know, your organization or your ministry. People will give. We don't have to force people. Hey, can you? Can you know? We need this. We need that. Can you? You have to give. You have to give. We don't have to do that. Why? Because they know that. Hey, this is a good name. This this person. This organization, the person who's leading the organization has a good reputation. We know that he is not after money. So I don't mind giving it. Uh, so people will just come. They will give with the, all their heart, right? Um, but what's important is to not go after money, right? Uh, and we talked about this, right? Because money can change the way we look at things, can change our attitude, it can change our character. Money is the root of all evil. And it's true, right? And that's why uh, Paul writes and he says, Godliness with contentment is of great gain. Uh, be aware that the enemy can use money to take us away from the call of God. Because initially we are, we are excited to do ministry and all of it. And, and sometimes, you know, the enemy can say, you know, uh, money starts coming in. And then if we are not guarded, what will happen is we have focuses more on money than on a good name and reputation. And we look at globally, uh, you know, there's, there's so many, so many, so many ministries who are going through trouble and going through difficulties and challenges. Why? Because they don't have the papers right. Uh, and with that, the good name is just goes away. Right, and just what you what you and I can take ten years to build can just dissolve in a couple of months, right? So build your brand. Focus on what you're doing. Focus on the ministry or focus on your business. Let the and do it in the right way. Money will come in. Protect your brand. A little foolishness can destroy good reputation. That's what we talked about, right? Protect your brand. Uh, Ecclesiastes 10 1 says, Dead flies can make a whole bottle of perfume stink, and a little stupidity can cancel out the greatest wisdom. Now look at this wisdom from Solomon, right? He's saying he, he has tasted every single thing he wanted in his life fame, money, women, wealth, everything. Thing that he needed, he had at his disposal. But at the end of his life, he's saying, "Listen, you know, a little bit of foolishness can get us, can cancel out the greatest wisdom." And he goes on in Ecclesiastes. He says, "Everything is vanity, meaning everything is in life is useless if it's not from God. It's nothing. It doesn't mean anything." Let me tell you, Solomon was the richest person during that time. And he's saying this, little stupidity can cancel out the greatest wisdom. So every time we are uh, doing something in the ministry, Nikhil, I think your mic is on. Yeah, every time we are doing uh, something in the ministry, be wise, right? avoid being foolish, uh, think about your steps, that's why the psalmist says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So think about what you're doing. Don't just do things. Think about what you're doing. Think about how this decision that I'm going to make uh, is going to affect my team. Uh, think about how this decision is going to affect the people, uh, how it's going to affect uh, the organization, and how a decision can affect you personally. Right? So always ensure your protecting your brand how do you do that have checks have counter checks right so if you have a certain process in place right 
uh, you check what what's happening within the organization uh, okay these are certain checks we'll put into place now initially especially if you if if you look at a ministry you start off a ministry it's small you will be doing everything you will be checking on everything and then over time as the ministry grows you'll have people coming in and doing things for you initially be there right you'll have to keep a check you'll have to see okay whether things are going right and um, build their confidence and over time you can just you know make sure that they do it the right way but ensure that the brand or the organization and the ministry is protected right uh, don't let go of that good reputation right i can think of uh, some of uh, uh, some very very wonderful men and women of god who have left such a lasting impression on ministry uh, with such good reputation flawless meaning no no uh, no cheating no uh, you know everything has been done the right way and praise god for these uh, people right and and that means what you and i with the empowerment of the holy spirit even we can walk that way right guard your intent even if packaged well evil intent will bring disrepute would anyone like to read proverbs 24 8 go ahead read that proverbs 24 and verse 8 uh, proverbs 24 verse 8 he who plots evil will be known as a schemer Uh, okay, you're reading from a different version. Okay, it says here, the good news version, it says, if you are pl always planning evil, you will earn a reputation of a troublemaker. I like that word troublemaker. Right? You, you, you keep doing things that is not right, they'll say hey, he's a troublemaker. Right? And, and, and so in our building, brand building and marketing and advertising, the intent is we must not cheat or deceive people because what will happen is over time they'll say hey this is a troublemaker and we don't want to be known as a troublemaker you know if you look at uh, you know you have these children in school and i'm sure in your class you know, while growing up in school you had this one or two troublemakers any problem happens even if the troublemaker is absent the teacher will say where's that boy or where's that girl why because he's a troublemaker now he's absent. So now the, the, the teacher is confused. Who's the second troublemaker who's made the problem? Why is that? Because when somebody is going on trying to do something with evil intent, their, the, the organized reputa organization's reputation gets marred. Can you picture this? Say, for example, you are the CEO of a company. You put all your sweat and blood into starting this ministry or an organization. And then you hire people. People come in. And they do something so terribly wrong. The whole organization gets exposed because of that. Right? It's, it's such a painful thing. right? As a leader, you may, be, may have done everything right. But the employee or person in your team have done something wrong so it's it's very important uh that we we check on all of this okay i know uh, i need to be able to you know uh talk to my teams make sure that they're doing the right things at the right time right advertisements uh now when it comes to marketing obviously uh you know there has to be advertisements and when we look at advertisements there are plenty of ways that we can advertise right products products can be advertised uh, on online on video on audio on uh, uh only by pictures uh and there are different mar in marketing uh, advertisement is very important right advertisement is basically letting the people know that there is a product in the market which is this and these are the things Oh, these are, this product offers these benefits. Uh, so when you are advertising, avoid sexually suggestive and provocative and indecent kind of uh, advertisement. And when we look at when you look at what 
what is happening around us, right? Uh, there's so much that's happening, especially I wouldn't say it's happening in ministry, uh, but when you look at the corporate world and we look at what's happening, there's so much of, you know, advertising, which half, more than half of them don't make any sense, right? The product is something, but the ad is completely not making sense, not even in line. Right. And, you know, suggestive pictures, indecent advertisements. These are things that, uh, you know, we must avoid. Right. Uh, uh, especially if you're in the corporate world and you know you're going to do something of your own product. Keep that away. Right? Now, in ministry, we are not going to uh, think about that. Right. We obviously want to do things in line with God's word. Uh, but when it comes to outside, especially in the marketplace, be wise. Right? And and I we can also say, you know, there are probably many, you know, I don't watch television, I don't have a television. Uh, I don't know what's happening around you know, when it comes to uh, advertisement. I don't know much about it, but uh, I'm sure there are a lot of advertisements that are clean and make sense, right? Uh, and uh, especially if they are good organizations, like reputable organizations that are, you know, uh, so, being right in you know in in terms of advertisement as well your unique sales proposition must be well expressed right? uh, the usp is what they call it right uh, unique sales proposition must be well expressed proverbs 25 11 an idea well expressed is like a design of gold set in silver uh now some of them also say unique sales point. Uh, so they call it the USP. So what is that? Basically, now, for example, laptops, right? You got a marketplace, you got a world full of digital, you know, new products coming every month, probably. Uh, we've got uh, plenty, plenty, plenty of companies who have, you know, come up with laptops and there's so much of competition in the market. But a unique sales point or proposition is something that is unique to your product, right? And 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 that uniqueness must be displayed so that people can see it and say, okay, I want to buy this product because of this. That is that this is unique about this product, right? And uh, uh, and so if if you're translating it again in ministry, uh, this every church every ministry is unique right all, all all ministries whether you are small big city town village all ministries are unique right and each one of us each pastor or ministry leader is gifted with certain skills abilities right so you find out what god has called you for if you feel that as a church god has called you for more of an evangelistic calling go ahead let that be your unique sales point or sales preposition meaning get people involved train people in that area if you feel that you know uh, right now there are ministries who are focused on bible teaching uh, people should know the word it's the word that can help people so uh so you focus on that so whatever you know you you have that gift and grace use that to your advantage to touch people's lives and it's not like we don't step into unknown territory. We can, but use what God has given you as uh, as your strengths. Use it to capture people's attention. And when you and I are capturing people's attention, we must also ensure that you communicate effectively. We talked about that in leadership, right? Leadership says we have people-oriented, people skills, very important. I can't say I know the Bible in and out and not have people skills. I should have both. Right? So communication with people is important. It is not how much you say, but what you say that matters. It's right? so important. Proverbs 15, 23. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth and a word spoken in due season, how good it is. The right word. At the right time in the right season can make all the difference and we always you say it no in ministry we say the rhema word the right word at the right time 
especially you know you know if you're in the marketplace you need the right word at the right time you need to know how to speak what to speak when to speak there are times we just need to keep quiet right? uh, and sometimes even in ministry right sometimes we're so used to talking as leaders and as pastors we're so used to giving advice we're so used to giving counsel uh you know what should i do okay do this uh, but Sometimes it's just keep quiet. Sometimes we don't need words. Right? And I can think of a couple of instances where people have come up to me and shared probably a loss in their family. Uh, and it's just so heartbreaking. It's not easy. Uh, no words can no words can comfort them. All I did is I held their hand and I prayed for them. That's all you can do there's no words that can comfort them at that time so it's not how much you say but what do you say that matters whether in the corporate whether in ministry learn to have self-control it's a gift of it's a fruit of the spirit self-control self-control doesn't only mean okay uh, controlling your appetites your physical appetites your mental appetites no it's also learning how to control your mind your thoughts your words your actions all of that so as as leaders you know uh we must develop that ability you know what to say at the right time at the right place right uh so one of the ways that we must learn what to say uh, how much to say and what not to say is by listening. Listen to people when they speak. And when they speak, you try to understand, okay, is it something that I'm going to say relatable to what they are saying? If somebody is talking about a product, you know, hey, I'm using this, it's been many years, don't suddenly talk about the weather. Yesterday it was raining. It doesn't make sense uh, because the person is talking about something or probably he, he or she is sharing something that's happened in their life. But if I say something which is irrelevant, it's just foolishness, uh, you will not be taken seriously. Right? Uh, learn to listen, learn to empathize, learn to sympathize, learn to uh, relate to the people, person that you're talking to, whether it's customer employee whether it is pastor believer learn to relate to them okay next one don't overdo the selling watch what you say it can save your life proverbs 13 3 anyone would like to read proverbs 13 3 go ahead anyone can read proverbs 13 3 Proverbs 13.3. Careful words make for a careful life. Careless talk may ruin everything. Mm. Careless talk may ruin everything. So resist the temptation to overdo selling. Now, how many of you, has anyone been here? You're, you were in sales? Uh, in terms of you know your work before has anyone worked in the sales department before anyone here you can just raise your hand here if you've worked in the sales uh, teams maybe any call center or uh, you know bank nobody nobody's worked in sales okay uh, how many of you get calls right now you know I'm sure most of us get you know they say so you know we have a new product uh it's better than this it's better than that and then we say no thank you we don't want it now and most of us i'm sure will do get a call right the point is when we want something badly we can also step out and go into territory we were not asking where we are not supposed to go we can get into the temptation of giving wrong details about a product and overdo the selling i remember we uh, i think it was a couple of months that i worked in the 
credit card sales department. Oh, I know we would make calls. Basically, it was a, uh, you know, we would call people and tell them, hey, uh, this is not Indian customers. This is uh, customers in America, in the West. So we'd call them and tell them, hey, we've got these new credit cards. This is what the credit cards do. This is the interest rate. This is what your benefits for the uh, for the credit card, and uh, you know uh, it's not easy, right? Here in India, they say our teams will say team leaders will say, "Come on, push for more sales. We need more. Otherwise, you know nothing's going to work out. Our, our team is going down." And then on the other side, they are in the U.S. One, they are, why is an Indian calling me? Two, they have many other things in mind. I don't want a credit card. Three, they say, I'm working. Why are you calling me during work? Uh, you know, so much that's involved. But uh, sometimes we get the um, temptation to oversell or overdo our selling. Uh, just stay true to your product. Right? Uh, success will come. Stay true to your product. Um, guard your mouth. Because we can say things that are not true by, by you know by overdoing our selling point, and then we may get into trouble. Right? So just guard yourself. Uh, again, you cannot get away with lies for too long. Uh, imagine you you sell a product, they take it, but halfway down the line they realize it's completely opposite to what was promised to me, and then it becomes a whole big problem. Right, uh, you cannot get away with lies for too long. Uh, there are limitations in every product, right? Um, and so we got to be fair, right? Got to just let them know that this is what it is. Cut out smooth talking and flattery. Don't fall for it, and don't give it as well. Right? Look at this, Proverbs twenty nine five. If you flatter your friends, you set a trap for yourself. What is flattery? How many of you, you know, I'm sure you've all seen a balloon, right? You keep blowing a balloon, what's going to happen? It's going to come bigger, bigger, bigger. It looks good, flies everywhere, you can play with it, but one pin just pricks that balloon, it's going to burst. Flattery is like that. You know, sometimes for customers right for uh, or people who are uh, you know in the organization when you meet customers they flatter the customers right? and there are plenty of ways they can do it right uh, and sometimes in the flattery we end up talking too much ending up end up making them a big balloon and that's the wrong thing that we make. flattery will get you into a trap now, how do we translate this in ministry? The best is, and people come up to you and say, oh, pastor, you have preached such a wonderful sermon. I've never heard this sermon in 10 years. Don't become a balloon, right? Because next week, somebody else will come and say, what did you preach? I didn't understand anything. That's one prick, the balloon is bursted. Right? Somebody will come and say, oh, you're so skilled. How well you led the worship. Don't become a balloon. And now that if people keep coming and saying, oh, you're so good, you're very good in preaching, you're very good in teaching, you're very good in ministry, very well you lead the worship. And what's happening? You're blowing into this balloon. And we are taking everything. We're getting the flattery. It's becoming big and big and big. And suddenly, you know, somebody will come and say, you know, the chords you played in the worship were all wrong. Gone. One prick like a pin, it's bursted. What's happened now? All the way from being big, now you think you're an ant. Why? Because that's what that's what happened. When people give flattery, now I'm not saying we should not encourage people. I have told people, right? Hey, you, you, thank you. What you shared was beautiful. I've shared, right? And people have come and told me also, right? So when they say, okay, praise God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for you just give the praise to Jesus. And there are times I've given, I've gone to people, I've said, hey, but I've not uh, flattered them in such a way, you know. 
oh you know when you walked on the stage only the fire of god came i could see in my own eyes that fire was surrounding you the whole time you preached to 45 minutes the last 5 minutes the fire went and spread everywhere now what is happening this guy is getting fully he is on fire now so no you don't have to do it I mean, remember everything is from god without god we can do nothing that's established in our mind that's it's done we are nothing without god right so cut out the smooth talking cut out flattery if you don't like something say it if you like it say it be true to yourself be true to the customers be true to the people that you're ministering to don't give it flattery don't give it don't receive it either i'm not saying people won't come and tell you especially if you're in leadership people will come and tell you that's for sure right oh wonderful message wonderful song say it praise god and finish forget about it. don't go back home and write down okay this person said this so today i got 5 likes oh my sermon or don't go to youtube and say okay how many people have watched my sermon how many people have liked this and what about comments it's all a waste of time i feel right you don't have to sit and ponder on that but all of that your words must be backed up by your work proverbs 12:14 well spoken words bring satisfaction well done work has its own reward back up your words with your work and this is the this is key right imagine you saying hey i this is what i will do in the organization and how many of you you know you have these friends <laughs> i remember during college you know, we had these friends they keep saying something right? they keep saying i'll do this i'll do this i'll do this but they don't do anything Uh, there's no backup so what happens towards when you get to know the person i say okay we know this guy is only talking he's not going to do anything he's only talking why because there's no authenticity there's no backup for the words that they are speaking if you want people to take you seriously back up your words with the work that you're doing So if I say, uh, you know, if somebody comes up to me and says, "I want to learn an instrument, and one day I will be leading worship or leading, you know, uh, my own worship team, and we will travel all across India or and in other countries as well, leading worship." That sounds really good, wonderful for to have such a vision and a purpose. and then after 6 months i see him and i ask him or maybe a year ask him so have you joined guitar classes he says no have you bought a guitar no are you are you planning to buy a guitar no what happened no i don't want to be a guitar a musician i want to be a preacher now what's happened there is now after one year you meet him that have you joined any course to learn about you know for if you want to preach you have to learn the bible right you have to learn scriptures you have to go in there no i haven't joined so what are you doing one year i was just thinking about what i must do now what is that call that's all words that is not backed up with any work in in the in the marketplace in the ministry we got to back up our words with the work faith without deeds is useless right so always remember this uh, a free gift gets attention use it proverbs 18:16 uh, a gift gets attention it buys the attention of eminent people now uh especially when you start a product right and you feel you know how many of you you go into the supermarket and you buy something and say get to buy one get one free or buy one and you get some of the product free um it gets people's attention right uh but also make sure and sure that uh, uh the point of entry or the way that this free gift is being given is given in the right way one of the things i've noticed many a times i won't say always is when you buy a product and something is free normally 
that free product is expired. It's made in 2010. And now it's 14 years. I remember once I bought something and then they said, this is free. And then I saw the expiry date. It was 2012. I said, you managed to keep this for 10 years? I said, yes, sir. We have a go down. We keep everything there for 10 So you're giving this free because it, nobody's buying it and it's more than 10 years old. He said, yes. So I said, I don't want the free product. Just give me what I need. Even when when you when you're doing your marketing, be right. Do the things in the right way. Because of that, the brand or the product that I wanted to buy has lost its value because of what was attached to it. And so when you when when things like this, make sure we do it the right way. Sheep can thrive among wolves. They stay wise and poor. What a pure. What a wonderful saying, right? Sheep can thrive among wolves. In the natural, sheep can never thrive among wolves. Wolves will come and tear them apart. It hardly takes a few hours for a for a couple of wolves to eat up a sheep. Matthew 10, 16, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Right? Uh, Jesus is talking to the disciples. He's saying, listen, you 12, 11 uh, are like sheep. Later on, they find uh, another person who takes on Judas's place. And he says, you 12 are like, well, are like sheep. Right? You are simple. But now I am sending you among wolves, right? In the midst of wolves, right? And and he's warning, Jesus is warning the disciples. He, he's telling them there's going to be risks, but you've got to be prudent, you've got to be sensible, you've got to be practical, you've got to be wise. Sheep. You and I can thrive among the wolves because when we are sincere, when we are godly, when we know that we're doing things in a pure way and we're not uh, you know, doing whatever we're doing for the sake of money only, when we stay wise, when we stay for pure, you and I can survive. Right? Next one. Negotiation. Patiently, gently press towards negotiations. Now, this is more towards, you know, in, in the marketplace where there will be negotiations that have to be done. Negotiations are important and they have to be done. Be patient, be wise, but also gently press towards it. You know, don't say, this is what I will do. Now, there are times that can be done, but if, uh, but not always. It's not going to always work. Be patient. And so, for example, now, you know, we have a lot of vendors. Right? We have a lot of vendors. We, we use a lot of vendors without which we cannot do a lot of our ministry. So, uh, and and something that we do is we don't, force and say this is what the amount has to be we negotiate negotiate simply means to sit on the table and say okay this is what you are going this is the product that you are giving us this is the facilities with the product these are the benefits of the product now when you look at the market this is what the price is so now this is what you are quoting how can we come to a better price? That's all. We're negotiating. You gently do it. Right? It's not like negotiating with the vegetable vendors on the street. Right? Sometimes, uh, you know, we. I don't know how they do these things, but uh, I don't understand that. Right? They hardly make any income. And we sit and negotiate with them. Uh, uh, be wise on how we negotiate and how we, uh, you know, how we are doing this, right? How we 
press towards an agreement be wise right uh, don't don't force your thoughts your reasonings on the person doors can be open mountains can be leveled supernaturally right isaiah 45 and verse 2 i myself will prepare your way leveling mountains and hills i will break down bronze gates and smash their iron bars and now this is isaiah he's talking about uh, through the babel he's basically prophesying to the babylonians to the enemies he's saying i myself will prepare a way i will level down the mountains for you for the people of israel he's saying I will level down those mountains and hills i will break down their bronze gates and smash their iron bars basically saying where there is an impossible situation if you look, read the book of isaiah it was a uh, book isaiah jeremiah uh, is it, it's a picture of these little group of people that is the israelites the jews and this you know like a fierce lion the babylonians and the assyrians just surrounding them and crushing them over and over and over again that's the picture you can get isaiah and jeremiah but god is saying that's what it looks like from the outside but here's what i will do i will prepare a way for you i will level the mountains and the hills there was no way see we, when we read the old testament joshua judges from the time joshua and then king hezekiah a little bit okay joshua the, the israelites were very strong god told them you go and i will uh, defeat you and then david had a strong army okay wonderful but after that things just started going down right uh what is it what is it that we can learn here the market conditions customer choices everything can change rapidly but if god is on your behalf god will level mountains he will open unusual doors that you never thought that can open you never thought it can open god can open that door right uh but you have to believe god for it you say god this is what i'm going to do i'm going to do things the right way i'm going to trust in you i'm like a sheep among wolves but one thing i know is you are a god who opens doors you are a god who can level mountains you are a god who can destroy every enemy that is coming against me trust god to open doors for you when it comes to ministry trust god to open doors for you god can open a door a door that you never even thought and he can open a door it's not not difficult at all for god right so think supernaturally think and understand that hey god is with me so i can expect bigger things i can expect greater things from god right so always expect those to open when you're doing the right things now if you're doing something that is not in line with god's word if even there is an ounce of uh you know any kind of cheating or deception most likely those won't open or sometimes those may open even with that but god is going to test you he's going to test me right and and so it's very important to do things the right way god opens those supernatural doors you step into those doors that's when we will see the blessing of god right so we'll end with this chapter and uh, uh we'll we'll start the next chapter next class a very small chapter customer relations and then we'll get into chapter 16 which is very interesting which is challenges and tough times which most of us have gone through have are going through and eventually we will go through challenges and tough times and how you and i as believers can uh, stand strong during those times right okay thank you so much for joining this session thank you for being here have a great week ahead uh, i'll see you next session thank you bye